Hey y'all, come on now, come on. I want to introduce you to Margaret and Thatcher. There they are. There they are, the Warren Watch Dogs. Okay, every year, this time of year, we got something growing in the yard and uh, it's blackberries, lots of blackberries. And I love them. And so, anyway, Margaret and Thatcher are over here. Hey, say hi, everybody. Say hi, say howdy. They look harmless and you know what? Looks can be deceiving, but in this case, <laughs> they are harmless. But, well, blueberries are awesome. I'm picking them right off the bush really good. Some of them are tart. But uh, the problem is down here, it gets so hot if you don't pick them, the birds are going to get them or the bugs are going to get them right quick. So anyway, every evening that I'm home, I want to come out and I want to pick some blackberries. And maybe get some vanilla ice cream and have some fun. I want to show you something. Look at this. These guys, their siblings are always fighting. You know, I've got an identical twin brother. For those of you who don't know, uh, we're identical. I'm three minutes older than he is, and I'm a hell of a lot better looking than he is. But anyway, uh, we used to fight like cats and dogs, too. And most people don't think we get along today. But hey, we get along. We always got along. It's just we fight like brothers do. Anyway, kind of like Margaret Thatcher do. I'm going to show you all what I got here. Look at this. Check this out. Next stop, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, a bowl of ice cream. No, I'm serious. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to put it in the refrigerator and wash them off and... Uh, maybe feed them to some deer. All right, tell everybody which one is the best dog. Can y'all sit? Come on, sit. Come on, Thatcher, sit. But ah, 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 ah. there you go. Now you want a cookie, don't you? You don't get a cookie. I tricked you this time. Tell everybody bye. Tell them bye. See ya. All right, it is a Friday morning, and today's a special day. It's my birthday. And I'm fixing to go eat breakfast with my number one hunting partner. And she is right here. And she's driven up in her little Jeep. And she's been telling me for a long time that her no, Jeep. No, I've been telling everyone. My car is psychotic. I've taken it to mechanics. They can't get it to replicate the issue. And the issue is it has episodes. Randomly lights will come across the dashboard. Like and, has seizures. Yes. And when I shift gears, like the horn will go off or spray will come out or the windshield wipers will turn on or the back ones. And people think I'm psycho. Okay. So I've been telling her for what, two years, three years Yes. Now? It's like, uh, show me, show me. And I can't get it to replicate Okay. So, it. so you're going to be first to see it. If I see it, you'll be the first to see it too. All right, Maddie, I want you to start it up. Show me, show me, because I doubt anything's going to happen. Okay. It just did. He saw it, but we wanted to show y'all. Come on. Did my car just try to start? I don't. Did it start by itself? No. Does it? Well, look, now the. Do you have it in park? Going, yes, it's in park. It says. Yeah, we got vehicle problems. Okay. Look in there. She started up now. No, they need to see that I'm not pressing it. Okay. I told you it wasn't gonna do it. See, it won't do it. See, I think the girl. I think the girl's got a problem. Okay, put it in park. Now close the door. Now let's. Now put it in reverse. See, look, it won't do it. I mean, this is the dang thing I ever saw. Now let me show you. It's a little one of these Jeep deals, and she's had it for quite some time. She's fixing to take me to breakfast um, for her birthday. But anyway, her vehicle is, uh, she, she's working on getting her new vehicle, I'll put it that way. <laughs> if anybody has ever heard of any electrical problems, any kind of problems with these things, I sure would like to hear from you. Post them below. All right, this is the place. Everybody's got a hole in the wall place they wound up eating at. Well, this is the place that we wound up eating at. And how long have we been eating here, Maddie? 15 years. 15? I think it's, it's at least 15 years. When Maddie was a little girl, we'd sit in that table right over there, and that's where we're going right now. Uh, Howdy. Whose place are you sitting in? Uh, Get out of my chair. Yeah. All right, I want you to hit me up and tell me when you walk into a restaurant, do you sit with your uh, back to the wall so you can watch the front door? Because I do every single time. Anyway. This is my place. This is where I've been coming with Maddie and them for many, many years when they were in school. They'd show up here in their school uniforms with me and we'd sit right here. Okay, this is his specialty breakfast. If anyone knows my dad, he's going to be having this 
every single morning. Every morning I can anyway. All right, today, or at least this morning, I am running errands trying to get things done. Uh, one of the important things is to get uh, the kids taken care of. The kids have to go to the groomer. Margaret and Thatcher, say howdy. Say howdy. They stink like dogs. They don't smell like kids. So anyway, I was told I needed to take them to get a bath and a haircut. Hey, mangy dogs. Next time I see you, y'all be all pretty. I hope. All right, I just picked the kids up from the beauty shop. Take a look at them. Oh, yeah. Y'all feel good? I'll tell you what. They look a whole lot better, and they smell a whole lot better, too. That's a good birthday present for me. And for them. All right, so I just pulled off the side of the road and saw a buddy of mine. He started laughing at the dogs. I said, what? He said, man... I didn't know you had dogs like that. It's like, how come? They said, I didn't expect you to have a dog like that. I said, well, how come? I got two dogs like that. And they're both really good, good dogs. They're a whole lot better now. They smell good and look better. But uh, I'm just wondering, he, he said, I'll bet you, you ask anybody that watches your vlog, what kind of dog they have, or what kind of dog they think that you would have if you wouldn't have showed them those two little mutts, what would they think you had? He says, I'll bet you they think that you're going to have something big and mean, like a German Shepherd or something. I said, give me a break. I don't want something mean. I want something sweet that I can I can talk to and doesn't... Anyway, what kind of dog do you think I should have? That's a, Or would you have thought I had before now that you know what kind of dog I have? But anyway, these are good dogs. And I don't know about y'all, but uh, I'm a dog person and I'm a cat person. Yep, a cat person. I can't believe I'm saying that, but... Uh, I really have started liking cats too and the reason why is because cats you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to them i like that all right so it's Memorial Day weekend, and this is a time of year. Uh, what I wound up doing, I wound up, uh, well, <laughs> I wound up really getting serious about uh, checking game cameras to see what kind of deer we've got. Uh, what you see behind me is like a, it's a. I'm gonna move over here. It's like a carport, and you'll notice down below it there's a there's a trough, and in that trough I've got supplemental feed. And the reason why I've got the carport over the top of it is because uh, a lot of times well, it doesn't rain much this time of year, but uh, sometimes a year it does rain and we feed 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, this is supplemental feed. It's not primary feed. And so what happens is uh, we have the carport over it just to kind of keep the moisture off of it because uh, if you've ever uh, supplemental fed, moisture on your feed is going to mess it up. But you'll notice also over here I've got a Reconyx camera and so I'm going to be pulling the card out of it here in a minute and then checking. You know, it's 90 degrees right now. Uh, it's it's uh, maybe even 95 they're talking about, maybe by money being the triple digits. But uh, anyway, it's hot. And so the deer are not feeding a lot during the day. But uh, we're going to check and see what the pictures wind up looking like. And this gives us a really good idea of kind of the deer coming on. I mean, what, uh, what bucks we have that are coming on, what they look like now. At the same time, too, the does, I mean, the, most of the does have not had babies. They're fixing it. Well, they're having babies right now. They're starting to have babies right now, and for about the next uh, four to six weeks, they'll be having them. So this is the time of year I spend a lot of time out in the woods, uh, even though it's hot and miserable. Uh, a lot of time out in the woods kind of seeing what we have, maybe pick up a shed every now and then, but uh, checking cameras and making sure clearly that deer have plenty of feed when they need it. All righty, yeah. A little camera right there. And let's see how many pictures we've got. Ooh, got a bunch of pictures. Good deal. I'm going to go ahead and take this card out of here. And then we'll see what we have. And if you have anything good, we'll go ahead and post it. I'll have it on the blog. If y'all got any questions or comments about all this kind of stuff, hit me below. You know what to do. You know exactly what to do. And right now what I need to do is go get me some cold water. 
get in the air conditioner and look at some pictures. Giddy up. All right, and looking at some of these pictures, boy, the does are fat. You can see them. And it's hot. I mean, mid 90s. Woo, look at the belly on the. Oh, my goodness. Look at some of these bucks. Young guys, but they're starting out really, really nice. Wow. There's some exceptional deer here. And with it being May the 26th, this is really, really good. All right. I'm fixing to launch the boat right now. We got uh, pretty good conditions. What else would you want to do on a Memorial Day weekend other than go fishing? And that's what we're going to do right now. Come on, let's get in the boat. So in all the years I did fishing shows, and I did fishing shows for over 25 years, and this lake, Somerville, is only about two hours away from my home, I never fished here. So we're going to go out kind of our maiden voyage on Lake Somerville. Alright, we're going to go exploring. That's what we're going to do. The kind of cool thing about fishing a lake you've never fished before, it's like when you catch them and you're doing it on your own, you earned it. Uh, we drove around a bit. We're on an island out here. And, uh, you'll see we're not alone. There's a bunch of boats up in front of us. They weren't here when we started, but the, uh, we're fishing in some pretty deep water and we're actually catching crappie. I want to show you this. Look at what's in this ice chest right here so far. I think we've got a total of uh, maybe 12 of them in there, but every one of them is a good sized fish. The problem is they are real sluggish. I mean, they're, they're biting about this far from the bottom. And so, we're sitting here, we've been catching a lot of fish, but all the boats pulling up over here, I don't see them catching very many fish. I think they're getting bit, they just don't know they're getting bit because they're biting so soft. And that's what they're looking like right here. I mean, let me get over here closer to you. They're all about cookie cutter size. I mean, every one of them is about the same size and uh, they're biting just so soft want to show you look how thin the membrane is here right here on the side of the mouth see my finger up underneath there that's the reason why they're so hard to hook many times because that is so thin that the hook just goes through there just and tears a little hole and then you can't catch them well, anyway these are one of the most fun fish I know of to catch in fresh water I, I like catching these a whole lot more than bass why that's a good question the reason why is because bass, you wind up pulling up the spot and you catch one or two or three, and but these you can catch 20, 30, or 100. These are easy to catch and they're a whole lot better to eat. All right, got to the house and come here. Look, caught an ice chest full of them. I mean, pretty good sized crappie too, wouldn't you think? Anyway, we're gonna fillet them up right now and then go inside and wash them. And that's what we're doing on Memorial Day weekend. Part of what we're doing anyway. I'm gonna cut the ribs out. I'm gonna show you something here. On these crappie, the fillet them. Take them like this, and then, of course, this is the fillet right there. And I wanna show you something else too that a guy showed me a long time ago. You take the rib cage. Most people just throw that away. Take the rib cage. Right on the back of it. Just like that. That's solid meat, baby. Nice. All right. All right, if you're a regular follower, it should not be any secret that uh, I'm a deer farmer and I'm so stoked because this is the best time of year for a deer farmer, in my opinion. The reason why is because the babies are being born. I want to show you, we're on one of my deer farms now. I want to show you what, uh, we've got a brand new set of fawns in here. Look at this. They're laying down underneath there right together. I don't know if you can see them or not on camera, but they're one of them is actually still a little bit wet. And uh, you can see them moving around there. See that? A set of little twin fawns born. And so, uh, you know, people wonder how long uh, does it take for a, a fawn to, well, the gestation period. Well, it takes about 200 days, anywhere from about 194 days to about 204 days. But about 200 days is, is a pretty good idea as far as when these uh, when these were conceived, 
uh, they were conceived about the 15th of November. Now I want to tell you, if you're a deer hunter and or if you're a landowner and you're out in the you're out and about, uh, if you see a fawn, odds are and it's up walking around, odds are it's not uh, it's not real uh, fresh. If they're real fresh or laid around like that, they're not going to move. I tell people about the, the third day, if you're a deer farmer, you've got to get your hands on them, you've got to put a tag in their ear. And if you don't catch them by the third day, well, my, my rule is you catch them by the third day, otherwise Emmett Smith doesn't have the moves that a three-day-old fawn has. So what we wind up doing on every deer farm that I manage, we wind up walking the pens this time of year, twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. And we're monitoring how the does are coming, looking for the babies. And so we want to pull these babies. If we're going to bottle, bottle raise them, we're going to pull them off before they're three days old because at three days, like I said, you're not going to catch them. But this is a really, really cool time of year for a deer farmer. And uh, the one thing is, you know, the people wind up thinking that, you know, we're just raising these great big old deer and, and turn them up, let loose on pieces of property and shooting them. That could not be further from the truth. If you got any questions or comments about this, please post them below. The reason why we're doing this is because uh, in, in our country of America, we have capitalism. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And so what it amounts to is there are people that, that want deer that can't get deer. They, uh, they'll, especially in Texas, I mean, there's a place in Alabama and Florida and all, deer farming is all over the place. But what will happen is if you've got a piece of property and, uh, and you want to manage deer, and you can't manage here because your neighbors won't let you manage here. They steal everything that you do, which is exactly what happens on most places. I mean, people, unfortunately, they just take what you do. It's like having a garden and them taking your stuff out of your garden. So anyway, what they wind up doing, you put a fence up, and then you want to buy deer. What do you do? Go to the deer store? Eh, there's no deer store. you got to call a deer farmer. And so when you call a deer farmer, a deer farmer, he can show you the genetics of what the deer are out of, what they're going to throw, and you can tag those deer and let them go on these pieces of property. And then down the road, you've got wonderful genetics so you can really start managing again. And so it's for that reason that deer farms exist, to improve the genetics on a piece of property and, yes, make money. And there's nothing wrong with making money. And somebody may say, well, it's just like livestock. Uh, I could argue it both ways. If you got a different opinion, you got a question or comment, post it below. If you want to know more about deer farming, post it below. We got some fresh little babies right there, and this is cool.